And welcome sports fans to today's sports roundtable presented by Harry Blackwell Ford and Dodge in Malden. Appreciate you for uh, tuning in for this uh, winter edition of the sports roundtable. We've had the winter storms move in through this week at uh, two separate days and uh, interrupting the sports schedule a little bit this week. So not a whole lot to report on this week, but we do have some uh, big matchups to report on from the last few days in high school basketball in our area and it's getting very uh, very interesting when it comes to the latter half of this basketball season and Enter entering into some conference play this uh, next few weeks of which we're going to cover and uh, get to a little later in our program but uh, uh, yeah not a whole lot of action to report on but still yet some big games to report on from this week and also we're going to touch on our broadcast schedule coming up here on YHC and SeamallSportsZone.com which you can take a look at going forward. And also uh, talking about some uh, some big games from sp specific conferences this week. And also we're going to be on the phone with Tommy Jacus, uh, one of our sports contributors, to uh, give us a insight on the Boodle Conference and other games uh, that are coming up in our area. So, hmm. okay. Go to black. The Ford Holiday Sales Event going on now at Harry Blackwell Ford Malden. Check out these holiday savings on 2016 SE Escapes as low as $20,148 on the web. Here you can buy a 2015 Taurus SEL for $25,682. Save nearly $11,000 on it. And welcome sports fans to today's roundtable presented by Harry Blackwell Ford and Dodge in Malden. Appreciate you for tuning in for this winter edition of the sports roundtable. And not a whole lot of action to report on from this week as we've had some uh, cancellations due to the two different storms that come through this week. So a little interruption into uh, the sports schedule for this week. But we will report on some games that took place over the last few nights in the area and as well as take a look at some big matchups that took place that are shaking up a few conferences here in southeast Missouri so stick around for that also we're going to touch on uh, our upcoming broadcast schedule that you can tune in for uh, the games upcoming here on YHC and SeamallSportsZone.com and we're also going to be along, joined along by Tommy Jacus, uh, one of our sports contributors to talk about the games that took place this week and a look ahead into these conference tournaments in the weeks ahead so some big games upcoming getting into the latter half of the schedule here uh here coming up on the last week of january heading into february and that's where uh, these conference tournaments will be taking place and we're going to be covering a few which we'll get to in just a moment as well so uh, uh quite quite an interesting time in the winter sports season right now going forward and now let's take a look at some games that took place last night from the area. And starting off with uh, Bernie and Puxigo, Stoddard County matchup last night. The Bernie Mules victorious 
over the Puxco Indians, 75 to 57. Impressive victory for the Burning Mules last night, and a big night for the Burning community as they honored and uh, uh, benefited Sean Green. It was the Hoops for Hope benefit down in Burney last night, uh, and they honored Sean Green, uh, who is finding a rare form of brain cancer, undergoing multiple treatments, and they had a lot of festivities for him, fish fry, uh, all kinds of festivities in his, uh, for his benefit as 18 for Life backed that last night, helped sponsor that event for Sean Green, and a great a great night for the Bernie community, and, and they showed up and showed out there last night, the Bernie Mules getting a victory over the Puxco Indians. So a great night all around there in Bernie last night, honoring Sean Green. If uh, many people can remember down back to the early 90s, him and his twin brother Shane really, uh, really were two of the better players here in southeast Missouri and uh, probably could have talked about a potential state championship team there in Bernie there in the early 90s if it weren't for, of course, those Portageville Bulldogs that won four straight there in the early 90s. So a uh, great event there last night, Hoops for Hope, uh, backed by 18 for Life charity and uh, a great, great event for the community last night, honoring and benefiting uh, Sean Green, who is uh, still in the fight against cancer. So best of luck to him and his family going forward. And uh, big ups to the Bernie community and schools last night, putting on that benefit for Sean Green. And take a look at some other games from last night and going staying in the Stoddard County Conference and a win for Bloomfield, a big win for the Bloomfield Wildcats last night over Woodland. Woodland was starting to separate itself as the top team in the area in high school or in the, in the Stoddard County Conference and Bloomfield answered back. Bloomfield's had a tough few weeks uh, since the Bloomfield Christmas tournament, and they bounced back with a victory last night in the home court, 49 to 48. So uh, we'll talk a little bit about that in our next segment. But a big win for the Bloomfield Wildcats last last night over Woodland. And also from last night, we have Notre Dame over Saxony Lutheran, 66 to 56. Notre Dame. Uh, struggling a bit this year, but got an impressive victory over Saxony Lutheran. I believe that might only be the second loss uh, of the Saxony Lutheran Crusaders. Uh, they lost in the semifinal round of the Bloomfield Christmas Tournament to Kennett. And I think up until this point, that's uh, their, <coughs> excuse me, only their second loss on the season. So a uh, very competitive team there with Saxony Lutheran this year. And also from last night, we have Advance, or actually this is from Thursday night, and Advance got a nice win over Notre Dame, 71-66. to A team to look out for in that Stoddard County Conference next week, especially in that tournament in Dexter, the Advance Hornets. Impressive victory over the Notre Dame Bulldogs last night. So uh, we'll see how that uh, county tournament plays out next week here in Dexter. Advance, the four seed, which we'll talk about the, the brackets in our next uh, in our next segment, but uh, Advance Hornets, uh, tough team, especially in Class 1, playing out of Class 1 here in Southeast Missouri. And moving on to some other games, uh, the Scott Mississippi Conference Tournament Semifinals, they took place Thursday night, and they didn't get those finals in last night, but Thursday night, Scott County Central defeated Oran 73-56. to Scott County Central advances to the championship game of that Scott Mississippi Conference Tournament, and they will take on uh, the winner of the other semifinal game, who was um, Scott City defeating East Prairie. Scott City, the third seed over second seed at East Prairie, 69 to 59. Scott City will advance on to take on Scott County Central in that Scott Mississippi Tournament final. And take a look at some uh, some other games, some girls games from Thursday night. Saxon defeating Poplar Bluff, 62 to 56. Impressive victory for the Saxon Lady Bulldogs last night over Poplar Bluff, or Thursday night over Poplar Bluff. And also from Thursday night as well, we have Jackson over Notre Dame, big 63 to 41. Nice victory for the Lady Indians Thursday night. And also we have New Matter County Central over Charleston. Six or excuse me, 57 to 53. Lady Eagles defeating the Charleston Lady Blue Jays, and also we have Oran over Delta, 71 to 34. 
Oran getting the victory over Delta. And Saxony Lutheran over Cape Central, 63-28. to Saxony Lutheran uh, getting a nice victory over Cape Central. And Saxony Lutheran still competitive team in Class 3. And it looks like uh, they might be on a road course for Park Hill Central. Park Hill Central Lady Rebels, the number one ranked team in the state in Class 3. And the defending Class 3 state champions, although they did suffer an injury on their team, Saxony Lutheran did. Probably not going to be at full strength by the end of the years where they would like to be with that impressive senior class. But uh, it's going to be tough to go through the Park Hills Central Rebels who actually defeated Dexter earlier in the week. That was a Monday night game that we had here on YHC and SeymourSportZone.com. Park Hills Central defeated Dexter in that game Monday night. And Scott County Central defeating Scott City 77-13. Impressive victory for the Scott County Central Lady Braves Thursday night. And going back previous uh, previously this week, Malden got an impressive victory over Haytai in the Budo Conference down there Tuesday night. We were down there for that game uh, Tuesday night, and we got some highlights of that game, uh, which we'll uh, get to now. And Malden traveling down to Haytai. Haytai got an, off to a nice start in the first quarter, as we see here. Two straight three-pointers to go up 14-2 to two early on in the first quarter. And, uh, you know, a great start here for Haytai. Here's a shot right at the basket on the rebound, plus uh, the, the free throw with a three-point play here. A nice put back here in the second quarter. And here is where uh, Mullen starts to fight their way back here in the second quarter. Nice three-pointer in the corner. Here's Shamadre Barber dishes it off for a nice two. And here the Green Wave really turned it on the second half as we hear a nice put back off the miss. And here a uh, dish down. Trevor Eisen to his brother Tyler Eisen gets a nice vic uh, nice uh, basket there on the block. And here uh, Malden really steps it up. A nice transition bucket there. And that pretty much pulls it away for the Green Wave with a 52-45 to victory. The Mullen Green Wave over the Haytai Indians. So uh, Mullen got down big in that game. I think they were down upwards to 15 or 17 points in that game. Fought back and finally got that lead in the fourth quarter and uh, pulled away with that victory. Haytai a little disappointing. Yeah, it's got to be disappointing to get that early lead and then uh, just slowly lose that towards the end. It would have been a big conference victory for Haytai. They could have got that win on their home court against an undefeated team, Malden. In the Budil Conference, not an undefeated team, but undefeated in conference play uh, from the Mulling Green Waves. So, pretty good game there Tuesday night. You can catch that game on SeymourSportZone.com. Uh, we'll probably have it uh, replayed as that was our last broadcast of the week. We'll have that replaying over the weekend as well. So, uh, we're going to talk to Tommy Jacobs here uh, in our next segment and talk about the Mullen Green Wave, how they're setting up in their conference, as well as the Bloomfield Wildcats get a nice victory over the Woodland Cardinals last night. So we're going to take a break and be back with more coming up. The Ford Holiday Sales Event going on now at Harry Blackwell Ford Malden. Check out these holiday savings on 2016 SE Escapes as low as 20148 on the web. Here you can buy a 2015 Taurus SEL for $25,682. Save nearly $11,000 on this F-350 Lariat, now only $51,846. From all of us at Harry Blackwell Ford in Malden, Merry Christmas. Deposit your check here. Or here. Or even there. Deposit your check wherever you are with First Midwest Bank's new mobile deposit. Just tap, snap, deposit. It's that simple. New mobile deposit from First Midwest Bank, serving the communities we call home. The area's fastest internet just got faster. Introducing 100 Meg Internet, now available from New Wave. With 100 Meg, there's nothing you can't do. Browse better, stream more, power every device. This is lightning fast internet designed to fit your family's needs. It's brand new and it's the fastest game in town. Get 100 Meg Internet from New Wave, your local provider of the speed you need. Call 1-888-8-NEW-WAVE today.
And welcome back and now let's take a look at the uh, Stoddard County Activity Association Tournament Brackets. They're going to be getting underway this week in Dexter. So let's go ahead and look at uh, those games taking place this week or the, the tournament matchups. And in the varsity side of the SCAA Tournament, Woodland with the top seed, they'll take on eight-seeded Richland. And uh, Richland with that top seed, or excuse me, uh, Woodland with that top seed, and uh, they'll take on the Richland Rebels in the first round. And also uh, in the neighboring bracket there, we got fourth-seeded Advance versus fifth-seeded Bell City. And uh, second-seeded Dexter will take on seventh-seeded Bernie. Third-seeded Bloomfield will take on sixth-seeded Puxico. So very interesting seeds towards the top of that. Uh, it seems like everyone's beat each other there in the top four. Uh, top four seeds of that tournament, especially last night when you look at Bloomfield answering with a victory over Woodland uh, last night. So Woodland having uh, two losses in the conference to Advance and Bloomfield. I think Advance only has one loss in the conference, I believe, to Bloomfield. So uh, Advance probably looking at <laughs> getting a four seed. Uh, a little strange there. With They've probably got the best record in the conference at this point with only uh, one loss to uh, Bloomfield, but Dexter looking really good as well. They lost to Woodland pretty uh, pretty sizably, but beating Bloomfield and uh, Bernie also there in the conference. So it's going to be a competitive tournament as it always is or has been here the last few weeks or last few years and should be a good one at the Bearcat Event Center in Dexter getting underway this next week. And on the JV side looking at there, we got uh, Dexter with the number one seed and a first round bye. Uh, the Top seeded Dexter Bearcats been very dominant in the Stoddard County so far this year. As uh, if we'll go to that uh, the next slide, there is uh, the JV bracket. Uh, Dexter has that top seed, and uh, do we have that one? Yeah, the JV side there. Dexter with that top seed in the bye. The fourth seeded Advance Hornets takes on the fifth seeded Puxico Indians. Second seed of Bloomfield versus seven seed of Richland, and third seed of Bernie versus six seeded Woodland, and those are your Stoddard County uh, tournament brackets for this year. And they're all all the games at the Bearcat Event Center getting underway Monday uh, in Dexter, and we'll finish up Friday uh, this coming Friday the 29th at the Bearcat Event Center in Dexter. We'll broadcast the final four games of that Stoddard County tournament from Dexter starting at 4 o'clock. That'll be the JV third place game at 4 o'clock. Then following at 5.30, the varsity third place, and then the uh, JV finals at 7 o'clock, and then the varsity finals at 8.30. We'll broadcast all four of those games live right here on Channel 21 and SeymourSportZone.com. So look forward to that later on next week. And... Uh, Quickly, just take a look at our broadcast schedule going forward. As, as I mentioned, we, we will broadcast that final night of the SCA tournament. And take a look. We've got uh, Monday night, Gideon at Portageville. Gideon at Portageville, and that will be live from Portageville uh, down there Monday night. And then Tuesday night, we've got Gideon at Risco, and that will be a nice Tri-County Conference matchup there from Risco Tuesday night. And then Friday night, as I mentioned, the Stoddard County Finals at Dexter. So those are the games to look forward to this week right here on YHC. And we're going to uh, take a quick break and be back with our sports contributor, Tommy Jacus. He's going to be along with us to talk about these games that took place this week and looking ahead to these uh, conference tournaments in the next week or so. So let's take a break and be back with Tommy Jacus. You just can't do it anymore, but you want to stay in your own home. Bales is the place to call. Bales is committed to helping people like you to maintain your independence and live your life on your terms with dignity. Bales can help with your family getting paid for taking care of you. There is no need to live anywhere but our own home with Boot Hill Area Independent Living Services there to help. Just call 888-449-0949 or stop by 719 Tico Road in Kennett to find out more. Bales, Boot Hill Area Independent Living Services, serving Dunklin, New Madrid, Pemiscot, and Stoddard Counties. Clear! There's a better way to jumpstart your soil back to health. 
Apply Enzone to protect and increase nitrogen efficiency without killing bacteria. Apply Prevent to increase phosphorus availability and reduce fixation. Better yet, use them both to get more from your fertilizer investment and see higher potential yields. Ag Explorer, your prescription for healthy soil. The competitive edge. It's the edge that sets you apart from your competition. Every business needs it. Now every business can get it. Partner with Advanced Business Solutions and give your business the competitive edge. Advanced Business Solutions delivered by New Wave offers scalable fiber optic based internet solutions to fit your needs. Now you can download without the wait on a network designed for you. Call Advanced Business Solutions and get the competitive edge for as low as $39.99 per month. And we're back along with Mr. Allstate himself, Tommy Jacobs, on the phone with us. And Tommy, it's good to have you on this morning. <laughs> well, I tell you what, you can't, I appreciate the compliment. <laughs> I wish I could say it's true, but <laughs> <laughs> maybe we can start it. You know, we can start it when you walk in those coffee shops. They just, oh, there's Allstate. <laughs> oh yeah, there you go. <laughs> there's but, always people like Terry Felker around that knows every basketball game has been played in the last. 20 years so he would know you know he would say well i remember reading that you did not do that <laughs> yeah <laughs> you call it out pretty quick wouldn't you <laughs> there you go <laughs> yeah but tommy uh big games this week uh, you know we did that game tuesday night down in uh, Haytai, Malden and Haytai, and Malden's had a great year especially in the boot Hill conference undefeated at five and oh in their conference and uh, looking to get that number one seed certainly in the Boot Hill Conference, and uh, that seed meeting probably going to be taking place this weekend, if not in just a few days. But uh, Malden looking really good. Got a nice victory over Haytai to stay undefeated in the Boot Hill Conference. So, uh, you know, they got off to a slow start the other night, as we saw in the highlight. And, uh, you know, they got us off to a slow start, but fought their way back to win that game Tuesday night. They sure did. And, you know, hats off to Haytai. You know, they had a that was the reason Marlin got off that slow start because they tried to come out of the gate and, and they were just really tearing it up from the three-point land and just playing excellent defense. And, and, and Marlin uh, really was fortunate to, because they'd get up to, to within two, within one, but they couldn't get over the hump. But with about, what, seven, six, seven minutes to go, they finally took the lead. And, and man, it was anybody's ball game. Hey, Ty come to play it. And they're going, hey, Ty going to be a, a problem for anybody that they play in that uh, conference tournament. Yeah, they sure are. And, uh, you know, they got off to that quick start, and Mullen had to fight their way back. And Mullen played a whole lot more aggressive, especially around the baskets we're seeing here. Mullen really attacking the basket and getting back into the game. And really turned up the defense, too, as well. They really turned it up, made it more difficult for Haytai to get some baskets. And a nice victory for Mullen coming back from behind and showing that grit to come back in that game. They sure did, and, and and you know, Tyler, I've always said that I thought Bluefield had a, a an excellent team, and I still feel that way. And, and and that game they played last night shows it. But you, you put Marlin and and Bluefield up, and Bluefield has had trouble in the fourth quarter and late in the fourth quarter up until last night. And Marlin has really surged at mid fourth quarter. They came from behind against Crothersville, South Thermoscot. And hay tire as well, and and, and you know, uh, I, that that's just the tale of the two teams there. Yep, and uh, it's really coming together for Malden, especially since that Christmas tournament. They played, I would say, they played fair ball for their, you know, for. The, uh, probably didn't play quite to their potential in that Christmas tournament. They're especially in the last two days. They've they've really answered well coming out of that conference or in that of that Christmas tournament and uh, playing some of their best ball when they need to be playing it in conference play the, over the last few weeks. You're exactly right. If they hadn't been in the Bluefield tournament or the Oran tournament, you know, there was uh, three of their losses out of their five, and uh, that uh, that's kind of uh, – Kenneth, you know, got them early and, uh, with a, uh, you know, regular game, regular season game. But, but those tournaments, they just kind of fell flat, and, and, boy, they're going to have to kick it up a notch and, and play four quarters if they're going to – survive a Crothersville or a South Pym or a Haytai or any of those other teams that could possibly be in that final. 
Sure. And uh, that conference tournament, Budo Conference Tournament down in Haytai, which we will bring the finals, uh, that Budo Conference final down in Haytai. So uh, it's going to be a competitive tournament, Tommy. That Budo Conference looking very competitive across, especially across pretty much the top four teams there with uh, you know, South Pemiscot, Crothersville, Malden, and Haytai. And even, you know, some teams in there that could give some fits, seeing Hornersville and probably a couple of other teams that come to mind, even Portageville. Portageville's really put a, put together a fine year here in the second half. They sure have. And, uh, you know, Camel was playing Crothersville, I understand, uh, last week, at last Tuesday night, and the game was called with about, I don't know, mid, about fourth quarter or something like that. Crothersville was up by 11. I don't know if they'll finish that game. Probably not. And uh, it was called because of the weather uh, situation. But Camel and Cena uh, play Tuesday night before the seed beating Wednesday. And so they could flip-flop the 5-6 seed there. And, and really, uh, you know, everybody wants the high seed they can get. But possibly if you get the 5 seed, you're probably going to uh, play uh, Crud- uh, Haytai. If you get the 6 seed, you're going to play Crudersville. So it really makes no difference. Both of those very quality teams. But either one of those teams – are capable of pulling upset. Yeah. Uh, it's going to be fun to watch, see how that tournament plays out this week or uh, over the next few weeks in uh, in Haytai when that Budo Conference tournament gets underway. I think that'll be the week after next, uh, the week after this coming week down in Haytai for that conference tournament. So it's always always fun to, to watch that tournament and very competitive uh, in that Budo Conference tournament each year. Yeah, you're exactly right. And, uh, as you said, Marlins coming in with a five and zero record, and the only they had to postpone their game last uh, Friday night for, because of the weather at Portageville. So they have one more conference game against Auckland. That will be Tuesday night and uh, before the seed meeting. So Marlins, and then they play Portageville on a Thursday, but they'll already be seeded. So Marlins could possibly, you know, uh, come in there undefeated in the conference. But Portageville, Auckland, either or Auckland playing better, uh, but Portageville we can play them over third place. They're always tough at their place we watched them really have their way with a very good twin rivers team over there sure yeah so uh we'll see what plays out in the budo conference it's gonna be fun to watch in the next few weeks and uh now we're going to transition to uh, another topic here we got uh bloomfield answering with a nice conference win over woodland last night woodland was starting to separate itself as probably the the top team in the conference but bloomfield answers with an impressive victory Last night, where uh, Noah Vandiver has 20 points, Tim Hector falls with 13, and a nice bounce-back victory for the Bloomfield Wildcats, who've really struggled since the Christmas tournament with a few losses, and uh, answered about as about as best as you can with one of the top teams in the area defeating Woodland. What do you think about that, Tommy? Well, you know, I want to want to say it surprises me as, as because of how well Woodland has been playing. But Bloomfield has got a team that could win, could beat about anybody on any given night. They have a very nice team, very well coached. Uh, but, uh, man, that you just never know. That, that that tournament up there is going to be about like the Booty Hill Conference. You know, you're going to have Advance, Bloomfield, Woodland, and Dexter just to name the, the top four. But then you throw a Bell City playing pretty good in there. I don't know if they're playing well enough to uh, – to knock off one of these teams, but you never know. So that tournament is 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 wide open. But you know, Bloomfield beating Woodland, that's got to really give them a boost headed into this tournament. Sure, they've uh, they've suffered a couple losses. I know uh, they lost to Dexter. Pretty, uh, you know, they they took a pretty decent loss to the Dexter Bearcats. You know, they were really looking to to, to answer to that loss from the Bloomfield Christmas tournament, and they played uh, Dexter on their home floor just a few weeks ago and. Took a loss to them, and they were just, they just seemed out of sorts. They uh, they've just uh, they just they've really struggled over the last few weeks. Seems like they're getting some new you know they're they've got so many kids to play. It seems like they're having a hard time finding that lineup that works the best. And uh, not sure if they come up with that last night, but uh, they got the victory out of it, 49 to 48, and really shakes up that conference. Even though the seedings are already made, but uh, it just makes it that much more exciting heading into the tournament that. Pretty much any one of these top four or five teams could come away with that that county tournament title and Dexter this coming week and Bloomfield, you know, probably, you know, heading into the Christmas tournament, you'd think that they would probably be the favorite in the conference this year, the way they were playing before Christmas, 
actually undefeated going into their own Christmas tournament. And now maybe they're starting to right that ship after their, uh, their, their rough few weeks. And, you know, they're going to be right there in the mix once again. You're exactly right. It'll be a, a very, very interesting uh, tournament to, to watch. And, uh, and so I'm going to try to get up there and watch some of it because there's going to be some good basketball being played at Dexter. And, uh, so it's going to be fun. And the next week is going to be fun down at Haytide to Boot Hill. Sure. So, uh, yeah, it was, you know, we didn't have very many games this week, Tommy, due to the couple storms that come through. But, you know, some games that really, you know, really made it fun to cover this week throughout the area. So uh, we'll see what goes forward. But some big games that took place this week that uh, makes things a lot more interesting going forward. That's exactly right. And, Tyler, before we get off here, uh, you know, we, uh, uh, I was just watching a while ago about the what Bernie did for Sean Green, and I think that's a great thing. And I remember that young man playing ball at Bernie, and he played the same time my son played at Camel. Those Green twins were very, very good athletes, and, and my heart just goes out to them. And, and so we, our thoughts and prayers will be with them, and, and as well as the George Gregory family from Molly. Sure. Yeah, it was, uh, you know, I failed to mention that the, in the broadcast that uh, Jordan Gregory, former uh, – Played what? Is it baseball and football, Tommy? He, he played. Uh, he and his brother, he and his twin, both played uh, baseball. And uh, and Jordan uh, didn't play football, but uh, but his twin did. Oh, okay, okay. I remember. I remember uh, uh, Travis, his twin. Travis. Travis. Right, uh, yeah. Travis uh, Gregory. You know, played football there in Malden, and actually, uh, yeah, went to college with uh, Jordan, I believe, there at SEMO. So. Uh, yeah. He, he, very very good family. The Gregory family, uh, very big supporters of anything going on at uh, uh, in the area, and uh, you know it. It really puts things in perspective when something like this happens. But you know, uh, we uh, we just want to send out our, our thoughts and prayers to both families. Sure. Yeah, that was uh, Jordan Gregory and his passing this week. Certainly unfortunate, and uh, wish best for the family going forward. So. Uh, Tommy, uh, anything else out there to share? I know uh, we didn't have a whole lot to, to talk about this week, but uh, is there anything out there that maybe our viewers can uh, take interest in? Well, Tyler, I really don't know. Uh, you know, not only uh, did a lot of ball games get canceled this week, Tommy got canceled too. He stayed in about all the time. I'm really not – so I didn't. I don't know really what's going on. And normally I can go to the coffee shop in Malden, and find out about anything you want to know. But I didn't get out this week. So, but, uh, uh, well, that, just, uh, that means the next uh, time you go, you're going to have a lot to talk about, aren't you? I, I know. I don't know if my mind can, uh, can comprehend all I'll have to bring home or not. <laughs> yeah. All right. But, uh, yeah, uh, Tommy, we'll look forward to Catching up with you this week, we'll probably have you along for uh, for a couple games this week. Some uh, some big games we got this week, Tommy. We've got Gideon and Portageville. That's going to be a good game. Portageville's looking a lot better, and you know Gideon's got a fine team this year. And uh, and then you, we got uh, Tuesday night Gideon and Portage or Gideon and Risco uh, in the Tri County. And Risco's starting to put together a pretty competitive team this year. Yes, they are, and and both those games are fun games. Both those teams, you know, just right next door to each other you could say and and it's going to be a competitive game and i understand the portageville gideon game monday night will be homecoming over portageville okay so uh okay. yeah big night for the portageville bulldogs that'd be a big win for them if they get it over gideon and vice versa gideon getting that win over portageville so should be a good one down there uh, monday night in portageville and portageville uh, much improved team from the beginning of the year you know if they if they were to go in, back into that christmas bloomfield christmas tournament right now you know, they, they would uh, probably fare a lot better than they did earlier in the year, but uh, much improved team so far this year out of the Bulldogs. Portageville Bulldogs. I think you're right. That's exactly right. All right. Well, Tommy, appreciate you spending some time with us this morning, and uh, we'll look forward to getting getting back in touch with you this week when we get, do some ball games and should be some, uh, some fun ones this week. All right. Good to visit with you, Tyler. Sure. And we're going to take a break and be back with more coming up. Welcome to NFL Total Access. The show that takes you inside the locker room and down on the field. That's where, that's where, that's with inside access to all 32 teams all year long. NFL Total Access, Monday through Saturday, only on NFL Network. NFL Network, where football season never ends.
NFL Red Zone, the channel that brings you every touchdown from every game on Sunday afternoons. Watch the most exciting moments like never before, live in HD. Every touchdown from every game, live on one channel, NFL Red Zone. And that'll pretty much do it for us today. And we appreciate you for tuning in as always for the Sports Roundtable here on YHC and CMOSportsZone.com presented by Harry Blackwell Ford and Dodge in Malden. We also appreciate our major sponsors this year helping bring you high, high school athletics. We got Explore International out of Parma. Also, Bales, uh, Boot Hill Area Independent Living Services out of Kennett, but serving numerous counties here in southeast Missouri. Uh, in the boot heel. Also, uh, we got First Midwest Bank in Dexter helping sponsor high school athletics right here on your hometown channel. And that'll do it for us today. And be safe out there. Looks like the weather's pretty much gone, but a lot of uh, lingering ice still around, you know, on the roads, driveways, sidewalks. So be careful out there. And we'll look forward to uh, bringing you more broadcasts this week here on YHC and uh, we'll look forward to seeing you back next week for another roundtable until then take care everyone